essentially, if you look traditionally into the things of Noahide laws, they were basically for individuals. The idea of Noahides coming together outside of a country, having a country itself that followed all the Noahide laws, which we've never really seen something like that. But essentially, we, you know, it's an individual action. Obviously, over the last 30 years, we've seen that many people became Noahides. Do, well, look, you, you people are all trying to come together. What happens is how if, if let's just go to simple way. Let's say that you could only give ten dollars for for cha- for put together to, to, to do something for charitable stuff a month. But if you have fifty people and each of them could do that, that's five hundred dollars. With five hundred dollars, you can you can you know geometrically more help more people and do more than you can as an individual. So in in in, in certain senses, when you work together. You you know, the more Noahides working together to, to do the same thing, you have a bigger impact than an individual can have. So, you know, in that sense, it, it, you know, there's a positive to it. Uh, unfortunately, the negative I've seen to it is mostly the, what, we, what I've seen in a lot of things is they come together for, for like religious services and stuff like that. That's, that's sort of out of it, you know, okay? Bible study is not so bad. I mean, you're supposed to learn. If you learn together with other people, that's not really such a bad thing to do it together. That's not like that. But um, the only thing, the wrong problem I have with Bible study, it's like you're bringing over something you did when you were Christian. You know, you know. So it's like, are you doing it because you're just doing it as a Christian? Or are you doing it because you want to go in Scripture? And, hey, it's fun to go and go with other people together. You know. So that again, that's an individual decision. You have to know what you're going. God knows what you're thinking in your heart. I don't know. I'm just saying you should be aware of that kind of thing because then, you know, you're, you're bringing over some Christian ideas. But together, banding together to do things, to, to improve the world, obviously, if you have 100 people together, you could have a much bigger impact than you have just one or two. So that's the advantage that I see in Noahides getting together. The problem is, is factually what I look and see on Noahides, they're not doing that. They're, they're getting together in order to get involved in things that really aren't as important. That don't, you know, from 50 years from now, nobody's really care what they did. Whereas if you got together to, to do things, to improve the world and, you know, it would be different. I, I told somebody that the no hide movement would be like, um, I would say the no hide movement would be, you know, consider, I could consider no hide movements being like successful as recent when I see that, that there's a, a Vandal Jones Memorial Hospital. Vandal Jones was one of the big people started no hide movement in America. They have a hospital named in his name that is helping lots of people. Okay. If no has become big enough and strong enough and financial to make a hospital that helps people, that does, then I know that, that, that that's done it. The name itself would be, you know, enough of an advertisement in the world that the no hides are, 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 are affecting the world. And that is, 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 is really what the point is. That's what you should be doing. There's, there's other things you do, you know, pray to Shem when you need something, stuff like that. That's fine. That's, that's, that's important. And it, it is something. And, you know, uh, but the real thing is, is you're trying to really make the world a better place. That's not to take away from the other thing. I mean, those things you have to do with Noah laws, honoring parents and over there. I'm not trying to say about that, but I'm trying to say that because there's so little emphasis on those things are really important, which is making the world a better place and doing things, you know, even in a small way. You know, somebody, a neighbor is not able to go to the store to buy things. So you, you, you offer to buy extra to bring to that person. Little things that you do. Hashem sees everything you do. So in Hashem's eyes, you know, that's fine. But your orientation towards other people and helping other people is really what, what's, what's really fundamental here. Yeah. Well, if you look at the, you know, the best way to look at it is, 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 is to look at the way the Jewish nation is. Who was involved in religious activity in the Tanakh? Basically, the priests with the temple. Everybody else, they were farmers. Yes, Shabbos, they had to rest. In the seventh year, they had to rest. And often, but basically, what did they do? They got up in the morning, they went to the fields and they worked, and they came home at night and they had supper with their family. They, you know, they weren't involved in that kind of stuff the whole time. That was, you know, because, you know, that's just what the society was. Now, I happen to believe, so what I had to do is I have to go around and beg money from, from people 
you know, all year that was my job getting it, whatever. That's why as I lived on that's why I had a city. But you know, that's what it is. You have to look at really what what did biblical society look like? What biblical society look like? There were priests, of course, who worked in the temple. I mean, take Yom Kippur, the biggest day of the year, okay, among the Jewish people. What did the average Jew do? They fasted. If they lived in Jerusalem, they might go up and see what was going on. They wouldn't certainly wouldn't spend their whole day up there. But they might come, hey, you know, I want to see this part of the service because I'd like to see this. Now, the high priest had a lot to do, and there were priests who were up there had a lot to do, and the Levites who were up there had things to do. But the, the normal, you know, the normal, you know, Israel, Jewish people, he didn't have something to do. You know, whoever's busy, fasted. Um, you know, the, the prayer service that we have now developed over the years. They weren't as extensive as they are now. So, you know, you know, I don't know what the exact prayers that they had then, you know, whatever, but it was, but that's, that, that's what it really was. Okay. You know, it wasn't, you know, <laughs> you have to think about what it really is. There's a certain impression. I mean, there's an impression from, from the, the, the Christian's view of Judaism. It, it, it is very, very out of line with what Hashem wants the Jewish people. What he wants the Jewish people to be normal. You go to work in the daytime. Yes, there's certain people that are involved in learning, certain people that are teaching, certain that's okay, fine. But basically, you're living your normal life. And, you know, th- that's that's what it is. The Torah is quite came into, they, The Jewish people came to Israel. They were given a land, the land was divided, and people went and worked the land. It's not a question of idolatry. It's, it's just not, it's a new religion for itself. It is a problem that I found from, with, with people coming out of Christianity that they, they've been taught that Judaism or God requires us to do all kinds of religious practices. And they don't realize, you know, okay, how many times a day do I eat? Once or twice? Okay, so I just make sure I get kosher. It's no big deal. I mean, I live in a community here. and I live in Borough Park, in, which is one of the most religious communities in the world, okay? For me, kosher food, I have three 24-hour-a-day stores working at kosher food. I could wake up two o'clock in the middle of the night and decide I want something to get some kosher ice cream. I just get up out of bed, walk to a place five, 10 minutes away from me. I get kosher ice cream and come back to my house. I mean, I, I live like, you know, in heaven. I mean, I have things here available to me as far as, you know, because of the kind of community I live in. But, you know, but, you know, the, but what my normal life is I get up and go to work. You know, I pray in the morning like I have to, and then I go up to work and I work all day long and I come home. That's what normal life is. And when I'm at work, it's important for me at work that I, that I work honestly. I do I do my work properly for the, where I'm working from so that I'm not stealing from my boss, for example. Okay? And and that's what I do. You know? I live a certain type of life. But I live a certain type of life where, where you can see the way I live and stuff like that. I dress a certain way because Jews are supposed to look differently than non-Jews. Um, and, and, and things of that nature. But, you know, so people come out of Christianity, they have this weird idea that, you know, Judaism is all about, you know, these rituals and stuff like that. Yeah, they're an important part of our life, it's true, but that's not what it's about. There's other things that are important. And for a non-Jew, that's unreal. These other things are much more important, helping people, doing things, you know, of that kind of a nature. Okay? So it's, it's, a, it's a perspective that's specifically an issue that we, I find most of Christianity. I've met very few Noahites who didn't come out of Christianity.